Hey guys, and welcome back to Spider-Man Shad Dimensions. We're going to flip what Madam Web said near the start of the game and go from the past to the future and check out the first of the 2099 stages. I hope you're ready for a lot of neon and a lot of swearing. Well, it's sort of swearing, it's futuristic swearing. So instead of fuck, you hear shock, because that's what sells comics, apparently. It's super cool, you know, you're in the future, everything is different and gritty, and shock this and shock that, shock the system, man. This is what we thought the future was going to be like in the 90s. We've still got a ways to go here in 2015. <laughs> well, we're recording this in 2015, this goes up in 2016, but I'm going to hazard a guess that between, like, December of 2015 and January of 2016, not much has changed. But Hobgoblin actually new to Shattered Dimensions. They designed him much like uh, Hammerhead Noir specifically for the game and uh, he's voiced by a, a very familiar Spider-Man voice alumni. Do you recognise it, Helldragon? Steve Blum. <laughs> of course it's Steve Blum. He also voiced the Green Goblin in uh, Spectacular Spider-Man and I love him in that role. I love that cartoon. Really fucking butthurt that we never got a season three but uh, I guess I should talk about how... Uh, 2099 is uh, diverse compared to the other Spider-Men. He's got three falling sections, and he can slow down... Well, not time, I guess. Well, it's kind of sort of slowing down time. But, uh... Well, I'm just quibbling details here. He slows down time. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> bullet time without the bullets. <laughs> there you go. No but yes is what I was trying to splurge out there. Oh. I tried to avoid as many cars as possible. But, you know, you do a bunch of takes, and you eventually end up eating shit, so what are you going to do? You're right. You, you smack your face into a car, and it kind of stings. That's what you're going to do. That's not right. How <laughs> does that work? How did you feel about the uh, the 2099 stuff, Lewis? Did you acclimatize to it pretty quickly? Uh, fairly quickly. I wasn't a big fan of the free-falling stuff. Just sort of a cheesy, cheap auto-flying section, really, and the uh, combat's a bit too heavy-handed for me, but... The free-falling stuff feels a little bit sloppy. It doesn't really have much weight to it, and I get, yes, we're falling through air, you know, we're free-falling, but uh, I think they could have done more of it, but whatever. We're on to, like, a mini-boss now. Really, really simple. Just take his, like, neon pumpkin bombs and throw them back. In the meantime, I'm just going to point out, like, a couple of references in the background. There's Black Cat over there looking suspiciously like her 616 incarnation. I'm not actually sure if Felicia even exists in uh, the 2099 universe. I think there's also ads for, like, uh, the Hulk. Like, he wants to smash deals and so on. And obviously <laughs> you've got the Oscorp logo in the background. That's cool. I like that. What is it with the goblins and always letting Spider-Man kill them with their own weapons? Seriously. Bit of trivia on the Hobgoblin here, actually. The Hobgoblin you see here was designed specifically for Shy Dims. Thank you, notes. Reusing stuff, it's fine. He was created using the DNA of Roderick Kingsley, who was, or is, the Hobgoblin of Earth-928, the 2099 universe. Ah. I don't think I actually gave the designation for the Noir universe. Can you look that up for me, please, Richie? Uh, yes. Thank you. See, he's my Madam Web. It's all good. So, here, here, here's a question. Hmm. What, what about 2099 Hobgoblin allows him to, to like, just shrug off getting his head stomped on by a Spider-Man? Nanofiber wings? Exactly. <laughs> his, his wings aren't on his head. <laughs> That's why he always does, like, throughout this level. Oh, you beat the shit out of me. Lol, nanofiber, bye. <sighs> oh my god, it really is nano machine, son. Jesus Christ. But yeah, you can just see how much faster he is compared to, like, Amazing or Noir already. And they'll take advantage of this by just chucking a load of bad guys at you later on. To the point where I kind of honestly start to get bored. Because another thing about uh, 2099 is that um, you'll, you'll ha have like a few outdoor sections, but a lot of the time you're inside buildings, and they tend to look really similar after a while. And um, I, I hate to say this, but I would probably say 2099 is my least favorite Spider-Man to play as. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He, he, he just He just doesn't have as much level variety, and, well... 
he's always in futuristic settings, which means he's always in metallic settings. Yeah, yeah. That's basically what I was trying to say, but better, so thank you. Yeah, it's just the, the um... Uh, the other Spider-Man, well, not not exactly so much noir, but in his case, it, it sort of fits the t it, it sort of fits his own unique tone better, so yeah. it feels more varied in the context of the larger game. But the other Spider-Man get like, we, we've had Craven's Jungle. We're going to have the construction place or whatever with Sandman. There's a, and Ultimate's going to have like the Deadpool level and all oh, that. Oh, I love the Deadpool level. But Spider-Man 2099 is just, well, he has no environments other than 2099. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not going to bring this up, because I did really want to turn this into a Marvel vs. DC thing, but uh, having never read many of the 2099 comics, I mostly know Miguel from like the uh, Spider-Verse tie-ins and so on, I would say I prefer uh, Terry McGuinness if we're going to go with like futuristic counterparts to Monday superheroes, you know, Batman Beyond, or I think it was called Batman of the Future here in the UK. Huh. Yeah, Batman Beyond just sounds better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say America got the the better title in this case. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I can sort of see it. I haven't seen enough Spider-Man 2099 to really directly compare them now. Again, this version of Miguel is a lot more quippy than his uh, actual, you know, universe counterpart. But uh, uh, Dan Gilvezan needed work, I guess, so there you go. Uh, I guess they just wanted to, to to make him fit in with the other three Spider-Men, because quips all over the place, and, you know... Yeah. It, it, people who know Spider-Man mostly from the movies and the games are going to prefer that. In theory, at least. I think as, like, a replacement, the dude who played him in Spider-Man Unlimited... Somebody Romano, I forget his first name. But Reno Romano. Reno Romano, good stuff. Uh, that was, well, it was like in another dimension or in the future or some shit. I think he would have worked better if they still wanted to have 2099 but keep him more quippy and the like. I think uh, Reno was okay. Like, Unlimited was kind of mixed here and there. I love the Unlimited suit, personally. I like the stupid cape on the end. The, I like the way, you know, the na it's nano machines. The suit is, you know, nano machines. So I like how it forms, things like that. So I'd like to see more of that somehow. There's a flashing billboard in the background, and it, it goes back and forth between Wolverine, the Hulk, and a picture of Spider Man 29 and the Hobgoblin. What fucking sense <laughs> Yeah, <that> yeah. <laughs> Well, if you want to take it at face value, maybe the news team or whatever is getting a close-up of this fire. Why would you want to get close to this? You could die. Because money, Richie. They've still got to do their jobs. It's true. No, it's a picture of Spider-Man and the Hobgoblin in, like, some sort of versus image where they're both looking into the camera looking tough. What? Well, why? I, I love how it's classic Wolverine and Hulk as well. Kind of like a nice juxtaposition between past and future. Or would that be present and future? Oh god, my head. Also Storm? Yes, yeah. What the fuck? I'm more interested in that billboard than I am on the actual boss fight. Turn the camera back toward it. <laughs> I mean, we complained about, like, the level design, but in terms of, like, um, stuff going on in the background, you'll never want for, you know, stuff to pay attention to. Like, just that spinning logo on that tower in the background is interesting enough. Well, you know, that's kind of the advantage to the whole linear structure, and I know, I know, I know a lot of players prefer the Spider-Man 2 uh, formula, but at the same time... There are there are certain ups and downs to the two, and I, I think the linear stage-based structure does this game some pretty good justice. You also don't get stuff like this in Spider-Man 2. I remember being actually kind of blown away by this and worrying that I was going to fall off the glass, but I'm not sure if they do much more of that kind of thing. Ah, it's just a sort of a random uh, set piece that gives that part of the level its own charm, but... Oh, that's fine. I kind of I, I I like that stuff. You don't necessarily need to do something with everything multiple times. I I grew up in a time when you know you were lucky to see a, a gameplay um, a gameplay mechanic show up more than once. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're into Pokemon. Jesus Christ. Oh man, looking directly at you, Oz. 
But uh, I think it's roughly about time that uh, we take a moment and uh, assign 2099 to somebody. And uh, Richie, since uh, Ultimate is my jam, I'm going to give you this one. If just for the fact that I believe Miguel got his powers by accidentally mixing his DNA with that of a spider. I think he's like a geneticist or something. Again, feel free to uh, you know uh, correct me on that. I do not follow 2099 at all. Oh yes, that's a classic Richie character trait, I agree. The whole genetic mixing and all that does that all the time. Classic. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the only two people left were 2099 and Ultima. And I'm taking Ultima, I'm sorry, because that is my jam. Okay, fine. Now, I, I should probably point out, seeing as you did ask me way, way, way earlier in the part, um, Noir is set in, I think it's Earth 90214. Okay, dangerous and close to 90210, though. Yes, I know. I was just like, <laughs> ah! But apparently that's what it is. Most people call it um, Earth Noir, or Noir Marvel, or Marvel Noir. But that's your number. Now we just need to find out where Beverly Hills is. <laughs> <laughs> Just a really preppy kind of Spider-Man in that one. I mean, literally, you can make up like any universe you want to give it a number designation, and boom, you're good to go. Shit, us recording this commentary could be fucking like Earth I, and Tom 64, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's probably other dimensions with better commentary versions of HFC out there. That's interesting to know. Gotta love comics. Nanofiber, lol. So why weren't you flying that whole time? Why were you just falling along with me? <laughs> why he was falling with style, I think, if I'm... <laughs> it's because he was taking a few too many hints from Rouge the Bat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I actually really don't like this particular arena or, like, set-piece fight. Because uh, you have to throw stuff, and a lot of the time, the lock-on function or whatever, we'll focus on stuff around Goblin, and uh, nine times out of ten, this isn't a problem. But at the one time you need to grab the uh, thing and throw it back, you'll be, like, grabbing, like, a chair that's on the other side of the arena, and that's going to be a problem, since that uh, kind of locks you in place, and uh, you will uh, eat shit from a neon Goblin grenade. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, this is a bit of an awkward fight. Well, I mean, either that or you're going to be hit by the Neon Power Rangers. <laughs> yes, thank you, Richard. Yeah, he's been attacked by fucking Time Force here, good stuff. Yeah, and I, I distinctly remember at this point when I was playing the game for the first time, I remember thinking, ah, uh, yeah, I can sort of see why people don't really like Edge of Time if this is 50% of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the slow motion knock through the earth, the, the sound, it just... It's one of those things, those little bits of comedic timing that never really gets old. I hate the guys who rush in off camera. This. So oh, okay, never mind. Thank you, Goblin. I, I was going to finish my sentence about how much I hate them and how zealous they are, but uh, uh, Goblin grenade to the face, boom. <laughs> I gotta say, it's pretty convenient how Spider-Man can just alter the course of his throw, mid-throw mid even, to, to make sure it, it still hits Hobgoblin. So all this dodging from side to side that he keeps doing is completely pointless, because he's still going to get hit. That's what I was talking about right there, by the way. Like, you, you have to be, like, really focused on the item. You can't just, like, go boom and it'll throw the one you want. Sometimes it will catch onto something near to you. This was really a problem during the next amazing level, actually, and that one nearly drove me to madness trying to, trying to get a good take of it. Yeah, it's a good game. Unfortunately, it just has its uncomfortable aspects. I would say it's one of the better Spider-Man games overall, at least in terms of 3D, but again, it is not without its problems, and repetition and a little bit of jank here and there is uh, definitely at the forefront of my mind when I'm criticising the game. Well, I mean, I suppose it suffers the same thing that so many Activision titles do, uh, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. they don't give it the budget it needs to be amazing. Didn't we have this conversation already in Transformers Devastation? 
Yes, we did. We did. And I feel it, it bears repeating here, and especially bears repeating considering the news that Platinum are apparently developing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. I call Leo. Um, yeah, so basically, if Activision gave them budgets, it'd be great. Is that that scarily realistic looking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing I saw a screenshot of the other day? I doubt it. I mean, I hope not. What game are we talking about here? I, there's something called, like, Enter the Shadows or something, I think. Lewis, did you see a picture of Doomsday from the Batman Superman trailer with Michelangelo's <laughs> mask on the front? Because I think that's what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I think he is, actually. Oh, that Doomsday is awful. I don't think so, but... It's okay, mate, don't worry about it. Yeah, his... His tablet usage allows him to get all fucking paranormal and shit and summon hallucinations to uh, plague Miguel and the like. Actual goblins. Oh, we're going full on scarecrow in here. Seriously. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Stop stealing things, Beanox. Create something original. Although, that said, I don't know, this seems to have quite a bit in common with obviously where they would go in Arkham Knight with like sort of in the sense of the hallucination -y stuff. I have not played Arkham Knight I think that might be a little bit of a spoiler so I'm going to cut you off there. Okie dokie. Okay. How did you find this boss fight Lewis? Uh, I don't think I had especially a lot of fun with it but it certainly looks trippy. Looks nice, at least. Well, you know, apart from the fact that you're in uh, sort of pseudo detective mode all the time. <laughs> I, I love how Twenty Nine Eyes is just blue. It's just blue. Nothing fancy. Gets the job done. It's a futuristic kind of blue as well. Man, he was going with a scorched earth strategy though. It tends to work. Oh my gosh! I've just. I've just realised that 2099 uses the typical film colour variants, so you've got the blue and the orange. Oh, even like almost a hundred years down the line, it's still going strong. <laughs> <laughs> it will never change. No. Oh, he's regenerating health, I think. Oh, uh, one wonderful. Yeah, one of the things that, I, that I'm always wary of in bosses that have these kind of flashy appearances is that sometimes there's not much to them mechanics-wise, and all of the graphical flair tends to, tends to just end up being a smokescreen for the fact that the boss isn't all that interesting gameplay-wise. So, That's really deep, because yes, and also it fits in with the theme of illusions. So there you go. I guess that's 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 one way to look at it. <laughs> it's like poetry at rhymes. But yeah, this is a pretty okay boss fight. I went right through that guy, I think. And again! It's like he's not real or something. <laughs> Shut up, Hell Dragon. <laughs> 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 Sassy bitch. Fucking amazing giving it all this. One more go around and he should be good to go. Into the trash, that is. <laughs> Another classic Richie battle. I'm so glad we could join him for this. He was telling me about this, actually. You know, when we were re-recording Lost Winds and the like. Wait, was I? Oh, it's a joke, Richie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's because it's in the future. It hasn't happened to me yet. Nice save. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really are on the ball. No wonder you're like the proper scientist and shit. Actually, speaking of, we all know, like, Amazing 616, uh, at least in the comics now, I think he either runs his own science place or, like, is, like, the head of a corporation. Noir, I think, is studying or saving up money to go, like, study science at college. Ultimate is in high school, last time I checked. Um, you know, <laughs> apart from the bit where he uh, was no longer with us. And, uh, obviously, Miguel does his science thing. Owned. No, no, the nanofiber and shit. Oh, Jesus. You broke my nanofiber ass. You said it, Webb. Now, let's take a better look at these. Oh, I'm going to put these on the black market. I'm an anti hero. Shock this and shock that. Only one corporation has technology.
technology advanced enough for this. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fucking just great. Oh man. All right, give us those ranks so we can go away. Well, almost a straight gold. Uh, I, sh I should follow in my collectathon instinct, I guess. Okay, guys, that'll do it for the first 2099 level. Please join us next time when we venture into the first Ultimate Spider-Man level. Bye for now.